Okay, so I've written out the email. I'm going to send in. I finalized questions and I'm going to answer him. I think we're ready. Are we ready, Tildy? And we're going to go for the first question. Not the second one? No. The first one? Why do you personally think Mark McGowan is so popular here in Western Australia? The way that he's handled the uh, the COVID pandemic has, like, obviously that's increased his popularity. He was decisive about what he wanted to do. He's such a dad figure, if you know what I mean. Like, everyone can be like, oh my God, that's a dad, so I have a dad. I don't think we've really had this before. Mark McGowan's all over social media. And it's not just Mark McGowan himself, but Mark McGowan's followers and supporters has a lot of interaction with young people that politicians don't normally get. I suppose making memes is like how young people show their appreciation for um yeah a celebrity i suppose hi <laughs> after we got greenlit the first thing me and my producer did was to create a tiktok account okay so that's how it works sign up Use phone or email. Oh, we have to make an email. I wanted to use TikTok as a method of gathering people for the youth interviews. Oh, Mark McGowan himself. <laughs> this is difficult. This isn't easy. How do I change the amount of time I need? Calling Mark McGowan TikTok. I am a documentary filmmaker. And I'm have you seen the Mark McGowan tattoo? Um, yes, I have heard about that tattoo. I have not. That was done, that was done actually like down the road from my place in Scarborough. Really? Yeah, it was bizarre. I said, man, I've had this idea of, of doing this tat design just to throw up and maybe I can get one of my friends to get it. Blake, it was his third day. I said to him, like, as I was doing it, you should get this. As I was designing it, I just kind of kept like saying like, nah, come on, like kind of give him a bit of a nudge. Uh, and eventually he sort of just said, yeah. Holy <laughs> What on earth is that? This is hand doing. What about the Mark McGowan? Yeah, oh, the Mark McGowan. I have not seen that. I really, can I see the, I want to see the dress. Oh my God. I haven't actually seen that yet. That is iconic. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> Who made that? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I actually do a lot of paintings for to raise money for charity. My latest one is Mark McGowan, <laughs> which um, you can see here. I've actually done quite a few um, celebrities. I decided to choose the premier because he was so popular and such a strong character for 2020. I was just using him as a representation of Western Australia, and I thought it was kind of ironic throwing in the West Side and putting a bandana on him, kind of juxtaposing he's a serious dude with that kind of element of, um, you know, something that more, like that younger people relate to. It's like a, like a Tupac vibe kind of thing. Noticed on Facebook, a friend of mine wearing a gown, a beautiful gown, by a famous international artist called Mauricio Alcazar. I loved her outfit, and so I saw that he was tagged, so I contacted him and discovered very happily that he was actually located here in Perth. We got along so well, and I said, you know what, wouldn't it be wonderful if I actually arrived wearing the McGowan? <laughs> and the next thing I knew, it was like Channel 9, Channel 10, Channel 7, and they just started like rolling up. I just think it's something quite different because it's a narrative and it tells a story and a lot of my artwork, you know, yes it's wonderful to be able to capture a face but I think sometimes it's really important to insert a story and a narrative and give it more meaning and I felt Maurizio and I worked together to actually show, you know, there's a bit of rottenness there, there's, there's sharks there. <laughs> she actually left us a gift and we forgot to film this but... Ta-da! This is the Mark McGowan, like, gown, but in a scarf form. And there's only two of these, like, two, only two. I'm, I'm actually bloody stoked that I got it. Take two. Wouldn't be surprised if I got blacklisted. 
So it's day 14 of not being contacted by Mark McGowan, but the show must go on. I think getting us involved was a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then like having you guys outreach to your friends because this campaign I'm currently doing, it's not working. The TikTok outreach didn't work. So we had to improvise. And I remember I sat back and I was thinking, wait a minute. You're looking for young people to talk about Mark McGowan. And yet you're not even gonna bother looking at your university. Let's just interview the students here at SAE. I think with anything that makes waves culturally within a society, there's gonna be memes. It's like rule 35, right? If it exists, there's gonna be a meme. The newspaper's getting on that one. I remember seeing some of those. That mask off post the other day when we were coming out of lockdown was just, you know, it's just like, you can tell that it's it's his kind of middle age sort of attempt at the humor. And it might be a little bit awkward, but I think the thing is that the, the demographic and the youth kind of get behind it anyway. They appreciate the effort. struggle of this documentary is not whether or not we can get an interview with Mark McGowan, it's whether or not we can find parking. You stated that Mark McGowan's sex symbol status was strange. Do you still hold this opinion and why? The thing is, um, it was put to me that, that he had a sex symbol and why. I don't know, know much about uh, the attraction of uh, Mark McGow. I'm not really well placed to talk about that. What's really interesting is politicians use fairly conventional, staid, traditional means of communication most of the time. So probably they, they've got usual media contacts and journos and they're, they're in the paper or something and maybe they're on the evening news since it seems a bit old fogey and bit out of touch. There's a visibility to Mark McGowan that's very, very different. Like I was saying, you know, the ability to connect through non-traditional means. There's TikTok memes. There's all sorts of material online which is pretty interesting and different. Odes to Mark McGowan on YouTube and the like. Consistently, young people vote less than any other demographic. So reaching young people has always seemed to be really hard. He's found ways to reach that demographic. I'm really hoping that young people stay engaged in politics. Because if you think about it, right, the decisions that politicians make 20, 30, 40 years down the track, they're still relevant. And it's young people that are going to be around in 20, 30, 40 years. So if this sort of McGowan phenomenon has got a few more extra people interested in politics, that's a pretty good thing. And I hope that it continues that engagement and participation. I think about three weeks before Stanmark was greenlit, I contacted Mark McGowan and we got rejected. His marketing manager, let's go with that. She said no, so... And, well, we never heard from them again. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to stop trying, you know? doesn't mean the story of Stan Mark is over. Let's just hope for the future. Calling Mark McGowan TikTok, no, that's f***ing cringe, yeah. I could times the speed by two to get the timing in. Mm. I have no idea what that would sound like, though. You honestly can't tell me they don't look like dinosaurs. <laughs>